Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, guys. We cover all sorts of detailing content. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and join us on Patreon, where there's all these different tiers, including monthly contests, where you can actually win, you know, merchandise, detailing products, um, or even some of these polishers that we're talking about in the video today. Now, today's video, all the information is in the description. <laughs> we're shooting this video live today, guys, and today we're doing polishing, and I'm going to introduce you to two new polishers. About a week ago, I shot a video on this polisher, the DA8 from Into Detailing, which is £100, and it's like your starting polisher. It doesn't get much cheaper than this unless you go for the Argos polisher, but this has got a little bit more power, and I would suggest this is the sort of machine you should be looking at if you just want one polisher. And you can swap the plate over. It comes with a 75 mil plate, so you've got a plate for smaller areas, they're a bit more concave or tighter. Okay, so great polisher, 100 quid. And that will, if you're polishing one car a year, that is a great tool. Now, what is the next step up if you want to go beyond that? Why would you want to go beyond that? Okay, so I think this is the next step up, and this is what a lot of people are using. Now, these are long throw polishers. This first one is called the DA15. It's a 15 mil throw polisher. So the offset of where this free spinning plate is mounted in the axle is longer. So you get a sort of more aggressive random orbit, if you like. So you, with that, you'll probably get a little bit more cut. Very hard to measure, but it's there. That's why they have these longer throws. You can see it has the same integrated style rubberized bale. The other features with this polisher is it doesn't have like the, the latch the latch lock it has a proper trigger and a trigger lock button so better control of the speed with your fingers and a good trigger lock there on your thumb and it has a nice chunky speed dial on the top and the rubberized bow the only other thing that's worth mentioning apart from the narrow body and nothing creaks they're all tight and solid these tools is that the plate does not rub against the shroud so there's no rub so it's a nice free spinning plate and it spins nicely on its axis, on its axle. Whenever you get a polisher, free spinning polisher, hold it up to the light, get the light behind it, look down it and spin the plate and make sure it's not wobbling like this. And it's a nice straight wobble and there's no connection. Okay, we've got a good crack on. That's essentially this tool. It costs 150 pounds. You cannot use discount codes on it. That's about as cheap as they get. It's a thousand watt motor in it. They get more powerful, these motors. That doesn't translate to torque, but it's a more powerful motor from an electricity point of view. Uh, it comes with a 12-month warranty, supports the 125 mil proprietary plate. It's, it's a brush. It has brushes in it, I believe. It's got the bale grip. Um, you can put a D-grip on it or stick grips if you like, but I'd suggest you leave those off because it, it interferes with the form of the tool. You can't get into the intricate areas and below the wing mirrors with the D-clamp on it or sticks. has an operating speed of 2,000 to 5,000 OPM, so decent speed range. It weighs 2.3 kilograms, which is very light. About as light as one of these gets, actually. It's quite a positive. It has a six meter cable, and of course, the plate fitment is five over sixteenth, so that's the, the thread size, if you like. So, have a good look at this tool, guys. Uh, into detail, I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, at the time that I shoot this video, the, the only people in the UK that are selling this new form of tool, and you'll recognize it from the rubberized bale, which looks a bit like a dog bone, uh, but it's a really nice handle, actually. So, have a look at it. There it is. Right. The next thing, the mini dual action polisher. Why do I need this, John? Because to buy both of these machines, the DA15 and the DA12, which is what this one's called, you're looking at 250 quid for both of them instead of 100 quid for the one tool. Well, it's simple, it's simple, okay? You get a little bit more cut with the polisher, which might be important, but the main reason for having two polishers in the mini is you don't want to keep taking the plates off of this machine all the time. And, you can only ever put a counterweight to one plate. So when you put a small 
plate on this polisher, the counterweight is wrong. So you can take out the counterweight with a couple of screws and put another one in for your smaller plate and into detailing sell that counterweight. But then that operation of swapping the plates around and the counterweights takes a few minutes. You're not gonna to wanna to do that too many times when you're polishing, especially if you're doing it professionally. You know, you could be wasting 20 to 30 minutes a day just changing plates over for the various jobs. That is why you will see professionals using these and guys at home might just say, well, you know, I'm gonna be polishing the car about three or four times a year, maybe doing other cars, friends' cars, and I want the two tools. Um, and you will use this. You'll use the big one for about 70 to 80% of the car and this for 30% of it, the front bumpers, the rear quarter pillars, the lower skirts, and I will be demoing the tools to show you exactly what I mean. The specs on this, guys, this little mini polisher costs 99 pounds, has a 12 mil throw, um, 600 watts, so it's down on power, because it doesn't have to support the bigger plates, there's gonna be less friction on there, so it probably doesn't need the power, I don't know, but the motor is only 600 watt, 12 month warranty, only supports this proprietary 20, 75 mil plate. Someone will ask, can I stick 125 mil plate on this? No, it's not supported, it's developed for this plate. Um, so it might stall out if you put a bigger plate on it. It might not be able to have enough power for it. 2,000 to 6,000 OPM, so the speed range is different. The dynamics are all different with little machines. Weighs 2.1 kilos, incredibly light. Phenomenal, that is. Six meter cable. Um, and it does. It has a proprietary uh, thread size, I think, as well. Is it 5 over 16 as well? Uh, and it's C, they're both, all these tools are C certified as well. So they're not gonna blow up or melt the first time you use them, hopefully. Touch wood. Right, let's crack on and now demo this. So I'm gonna, this is all live. This is live. The pressure of doing live. So I'm gonna get this over to here, where we're all set up. Now, over here, just before we do, you'll see all the polishing stuff that I've talked about before. Product-wise, if you want to go buying thousands of different abrasives, you know, <laughs> exploring them all, by all means do so. And I've been saying for a while now, you should only really have three, or four, maybe an AOI as well. Heavy cut, medium cut, which is a single stage product potentially as well. Finishing polish, done. And then maybe you'll have like an AOI type glaze for just buffing, you know, putting, a, shining up your paintwork. Koch Chemi. H9 heavy cut, F6 medium cut or single stage, M3 finishing polish, done. If you're a Shell Concepts guy, and now the other range that I rate, you could have S2 black heavy cut or S3 if you wanna lower the cut slightly as your heavy cut, S20 black as your single stage, mid range, and S40 as your finishing polish, done. Pads. As you know guys, the flex pads are what I recommend. These purple cutting pads are still nice and soft and won't mar up the paint unless it's exceptionally soft. And then the orange polishing pads you will do your polishing with, your finishing with, okay? So cutting, finishing, two different sizes. This for the 125 mil, this for the 75 mil polisher. Um, can you single stage with these pads? Yes, use the purple on hard paint or on soft paint, single stage with the orange. Okay, so we'll go with the purples today because we did the, we did the um, orange last time. So I'll show you that the purple won't mar up the paintwork. So as always, set your machine down on top of your polisher so that way you can get a good line. Look at the quality. Oh, smack the uh, tripod. Look at the quality of that. Straight on. So if you're looking down, you can get... You can fit them a bit better, and then we'll do the same with this one. Look down to the machine. I don't know if there, there's a little bit of a gap, isn't there? Look at that. You get hang of just putting them on properly after a while. So that's on perfectly straight. There we go. And I've never used these two machines. Um, I've used, I've tested these for, for in round before, but they were different ones, so here we go. <laughs> So they've still got the factory uh, plastic doodah that you've got around the ravel. Right, off with that. And this one we've used actually. We used this one down at Fresh Layers. I've got some secondary opinions on this from the guys down there, which is interesting. 
Um, right, let's plug in. I've talked all about panel wipes, guys, before. We're using Koch Chemi, which is a concentrated, think of it as 99% proof IPA. We put 2% Surfex, so we use about 25% of the Koch Chemi seal. We use 2% Surfex HD or any APC. And then the rest, 73%, is it? 73% water, and that will get you a strong panel wipe to uh, help you do inspections. And I've got it in the old Hanford's pump sprayer. Tape is also important, and we're using SP80 tape. All of the stuff I'm showing you into detailing stock, and uh, you know, I may, may list it in the description, I may not, um, I've talked about it so many times. Okay, we have power. Now, let's put our product down. So, I'm gonna go with the, the mid-range F6. Give it a good shake. <laughs> Oh, you're going mad. Yeah, you can't see what I'm doing. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Right. We're going with four nice big dots because we know we've got a bone dry pad. Probably have to come back for some more. Uh, and we've got our potato cannage. So now we go down to the car. And just before I start, just before, so I've mentioned earlier on you'll use the big DA for. Nice areas where you've got access to, nice flat areas. So for example, I do a, I've got a plastic bit of trim there, so I've taped it off, because I don't want to fill all that trim up with polish and smash polish into the plastic. And I've taped the rubber up at the top. So I'll do a nice polishing set there, and then I'll do another one there. And then I'd use the mini polisher, to tape up here, and I'll do that little panel there. If you try polishing that with a big polisher, it's not gonna fit and you're gonna be smacking up against this. And so, you know, it's picking the right size pad for the job. But I'm, all, I'm gonna demo the mini polisher on this section here, because it's all nice and curvy. And really, I've got a little section there, then it bends around to that section. And if you're trying to use a big pad on this concave section, it's not gonna work. DA's like being used flat. They do not, they're tools that you can't really tilt the machine because um, you'll stop the sideways movement, you know, it just doesn't work, you'll stall it out, it's not designed for that, whereas a rotary, you can tilt, and then you can get that different profile of the pad, and go down there, so it's an important little tip that actually, so the smaller pad will cope with what I'm asking it to do on the wing a lot better, now before I get started, just, it's got a bit of panel wipe still on there, just going to make sure that overnight, no dust has fallen, on that panel, debris can fall out of the roof, land on the car, and then you buff it in and scratch the paint. So you have to be mindful of that. Right, let's set my big camera down here, and we're gonna switch over to the infamous. You got a nice view there, let's bring you down a bit. It looks a bit, a bit top heavy, a bit like me. Uh, I just need to check the time as well, make sure I've got enough time to do this. What time is it? Come on. Yeah, I've got plenty of time. Right. Take this. Take our polisher. Oh. Light source, very important. I wait a second. I don't need like putting these on the floor, but we'll do this. Right. Switch it over to the infamous potato cam. Come on. Turn on. Dig, 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 dig. Make sure got a good lens okay enabling potato cam here we go potato cam is enabled Ooh. light source got a good powerful little CD torch here solid old thing this is magnetic as well quite handy rubberized on the base you can clamp that down and you know you can see what you're doing but let's have a look at this paintwork Boof. so you can see even on this camera let's get the light source back you can see all the swirlies. So we have horrible swirly paint. And you'll be able to see the improvement. There, you can see it good there. We go down here, you can see it good. You can see a bit of clay marring there, hopefully. See that little hologrammy type marring. Right, let's pop that. Pop this here. We've got two sets to do. Get a move on, John. Right. Potato can. Where's the best place to put potato can? 
Oh, this is going to be tricky. Let's do this. Oh, it's going to be looking down. That's going to look rubbish. How are we going to do this, John? Oh, just going to... No idea if this is going to look any good. Right. So, down to speed one. Let's dab out our product with a stone cold pad. Let's try and suck some of this product up. Let's get this cord on my shoulder. Well, people are going to go ballistic. Right, now let's just work this in. Okay, so I'm on speed one and I can see that pad is stalling out. You guys are going to want to see the stall. So I'm going to get a white marker pen. How organised are you? Where's my white pen? Uh oh. Oh, come on. Ah, here it is. Okay. We're going to put a white dot on here. Not a white line. There we go. So you can see. Oh, so you can see what's going on. Now, 6,000 OPM, top, top end, that's way too fast. I'm going to drop down to four. These machines are powerful. So let's see what four's like. That's nice. Time-wise, so I'm going to stop there. You get the idea. And I'm going to show you the results as well. So hopefully, let's just check this camera. Yeah, you got a good angle there. You got a good angle down here. Oh, let's get this. A panel white. And uh, so first of all, let's just pick up the camera. Normally, you do at least four passes. Um, you can see here the product still hasn't dried out, so we could, could have carried on going with this. Now I'm just going to wipe really gently. Already, I can see an improvement on that bit versus that. Big difference. This paint does respond nicely, so you could make this car look really nice. We're gonna. I'm not actually doing full correction on this car, so uh, but who? But we're just demoing it. So. 
pinch the cloth, keep it flat to the panel, just gently circles so you pick all that polish up. You probably want a light source while you're buffing because it looks great here, but with the lights on it, you see all the little greasy bits, but this will do for the time being. So always buff off 99% of your product first and flip your cloth, keep track of which side's done what, and then just get your panel wipe, little shake. There we go, don't want it all running everywhere, so don't, not too much. And then you want to just wipe this in circles as well over the entire area. That tape needs to be stuck down there. So it's just lifted up and you don't, don't want that to happen because you'll get the glue coming out of the tape. Wipe along there, get that edge. <laughs> wipe along there, okay. And, okay, good, good, good. We're rushing a little bit. Now I'm just waiting for this to flash. You can see the chemical there. Once it goes, it'll go. It's quite cool today. Uh, just wait for it to flash. It's starting to go. It's starting to go. We need a little hair dryer. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to be all day, so it's mainly flash from here. So let's get the light. Um, now, you know, we've still got little scratch marks in there, but Jesus, we didn't even do four passes. I think it was, was it two passes? And you can see, if I keep the light far back, you can see the, that's not scratch. I thought there was a scratch, but it's the reflection of the... Um, Camera, the paintwork is looking fantastic actually. There's a few little marks in there still. But then we go back over to where we haven't polished like we did in the last video, and it's just a mess. So we've really, it's just press the viewfinder there. We've really um, improved this paintwork. We go down here as well, on that main section. There's some still, actually, there's some still, there's some scratches there, isn't there? But you get the idea. If we'd have done our four sets, we'd have got a better improvement there. Um, so this paint, you could actually make it, you can make this paint really, really good. Um, and none of this is machine marring, it's all lines going this way. So even our thicker purple pad is a viable pad to use if you're looking to work the cut a little bit more just drop the pressure on the panel a little bit or increase the pressure on the panel a little bit more so you just work the abrasives a tad harder although you're not going to be going nuts with the down pressure with these these tools because they're stall out right over to the mini it's important to talk about the negatives with these tools as well guys um there has to be a compromise doesn't there with a hundred pound tool you know Rupes and Flex uh, sell these mini polishers and the 15 inch polishers and they're about 300 quid, three to 400 quid. And these are 100, so what's the compromise? Well, they've got the power, they've got the power and they're, they're, they're fine on the stall front as well. The compromise is they kick out a little bit more noise and they kick out a little bit more vibration. They're not quite as, they don't have the finesse of the Rupes and the um, flex tools that are a little bit smoother. Um, they don't have some of the sort of microprocessor controls that, that, that the flex has as well and stuff like that. So there's a little bit, they don't have all those sort of safety features and stuff like that and cutting out. And I, I don't know if they have over temperature monitoring and stuff like that. I don't think they do. I don't think they, they're microprocessor controlled. So they're a bit more basic. They're a bit more, woo! <laughs> A little bit of this and a little bit of that. A bit more. Woof. Let's just sort this camera out. I'm going to just do a quick reposition. And we're going to go straight into using the Mini. So you've got a good shot there. Let's get this cable out of the way. Get our thing down there. Got our light source and our polish. And we're ready to go. Ooh, this must look... This will look awful. I'll be flying around. Okay polish so i'm doing everything with one hand so forgive you know forgive some of the things you are seeing here um so one hand put the polish down i'm going to do three big blobs 
because it's bone dry. Just wipe off that little excess. That's a little tip. Always use the pad to wipe off the excess. So when you pop this back down, well, it's still going to do it. You get a little pop of polish pop out the top, which can make a mess and build up. So I was trying to just manage that. Try and avoid getting all the polish over your fingertips and stuff like that. Because then you put it over the trigger of the polisher and try and keep everything finished nice. And when you're finished, get one of your cloths. Put spray a bit of your panel wipe in it and go over and wipe off all the excess product off of your tool and just keep it, it doesn't have to be mint, but just keep it half decent. Right, now we're gonna do this. Same thing again. Right, this is probably a horrible shot, isn't it? So, working in a smaller area with a smaller tool. Let's get our speed down to one. Same principle, guys. Oh, I should show you the paintwork first, shouldn't I? Oh, you get the idea though. It's covered in swirls. It's absolutely, it's absolutely plastered. Look, you see that? Yeah, you can. Yeah, not too bad. But you'll see over here. So the bit where we start polishing, just above the wheel, it's gonna look a lot better. Um, this wing is not good, the paintwork on this wing. Really bad. Off for this. If you wanted to really, you know, I'm rushing a bit with that last set. You really just you do need to do your four passes at least. Um, don't cut it down to two, but it gives you a rough idea. You're aim, we're aiming to get a really good level of correction. Whenever you work, you really want to be doing one compounding set, ideally. So let's spread this out and speed one. Mm, a bit wobbly there, it's all right. I mean, with the pad alignment. Nice and slow. It's obviously going to stall out at that speed. Oh, you're going to want to see the stall. You're going to want to see the stall. Hold on. This is the joy of doing it all like this. Pop that down there, go and get the pen. Self organising that pen, John. There it is. Bear with me. I can always cut that bit out. Let's put on our marker pen. Here it is. So we've got a line on the tool. Chuck that over there. Get this on my shoulder. Crank up to about speed four. We'll start there. We want to balance the speed so we're not stalling, but we don't want to be going 10 to the dozen where it feels like it's going to overheat and work the pad too hard. So nice and gentle. That's got a, doesn't have a trigger. Starting a little bit faster, a tiny bit faster. There we go, there we go, there we go. So nice and smooth. Good paper to protect all the rubber. So nice. I would do two more passes. So that was one vertical pass, no, one horizontal pass, one vertical pass. I would then do another horizontal pass and another vertical pass. So we're kind of doing half the amount we should do really for the purposes of time and um, 
you know, not losing you. So let's just show this now. I flip the cloth. We gently buff. We gently buff. We should. We've got a little bit of IPA coming through there. If you put the reason I wipe the excess cloth off, uh, excess polish off before you IPA, is it will just smear more if you've got loads of polish and you hit it with the IPA. So I always like to buff with a dry cloth and then IPA on. It's quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot is the polite way of saying too much. Um, and while it's nice and wet, it's going to thin the polish and then it makes it easier to collect it with your microfiber and then once you've done that you get the level down where it will start to buff out in the summer this will be vaporizing instantly in the winter at this temperature it's right on the point of um where it's going to vaporize so i'd need to i want to show you the results after it's vaporized but it's still on there so let's just grab another cloth this one here it's dry fold that over we've got to get this video ended soon so this is looking this paintwork on this wing is the worst on the car because i can see texture in the paint and underneath the paint i can see da marks this has been painted by a builder ah yeah it's okay it's okay uh, it is what it is you can see the sandy marks in the paint as well but from a swirls perspective you the gopro will not pick that up you're seeing the reflection of the gopro there so you can see it's the odd mark in there guys but the paint you can now see all the fleck and the gloss and the reflection is nice and if i look at the actual um light source the reflection of it's a lot clearer rather than all kind of opaque so that half a set has turned the paintwork from this horrible mess uh into you know well on its way and um you know we've not even done a great job there we would spend a bit more time inspecting we would maybe we would maybe refine again go again as required but just even that two pass set has had a massive improvement on the car it's lovely when you get time doing your full machine polish i can't wait to get all the paintwork done on this car i can't wait and then get that polish done and work my way around do it properly this car even with bad paint will be popping and looking so much nicer and that is the joy of machine polishing um let me go back over to this cam or have I run out of battery? I've run out of battery again. I've run out of battery. Why has it turned itself off? Let's just see. No, I have battery. Please let me say I've recorded that. No, that's the wrong thing. Where's my video gone? I oh, know that is it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so something happened. <laughs> so. I'm listening to myself ramble on i just want to make sure i got all that in the can i did yeah oh, it gives up at half an hour so you've got half an hour roll on that that's interesting learn something new about my new m50 phenomenal camera let's end this one here guys so hopefully you understand this tool these tools now what you're getting you're not quite getting the poise and precision of the the rupes and the flex you're getting a solid powerful cheaper tool that kicks out a little bit more noise um and, and a tiny bit more vibration that's what you're not getting but great value for money great backup tools as well if you're a professional and you do have the rupees i know a lot of people use them that way but if you're a guy at home and you're looking to do a bit more polishing and you don't want to keep swapping the plates out then this is the next step up on the rung of the ladder incredibly affordable lots of capability guys you can do work to the top standard with these polishers any polishers really you know as long as They've got a bit of grunt. You can do, there's nothing you can't do with these, this polisher here either. It will just take you a little bit longer. There is also, we've already, we've done a review of this before, but this is the inter-detailing force rotation, which is a bit like the old Flex 3401 with a couple of, it's got a weird little rotating ball joint, some slightly diff different things on it, rubber here and rubber here. But apart from that, it looks like a um, 3401. 
Um, we've reviewed that already. Maybe we can talk about it or use it in another polisher and use it in another video. We'll, we'll see on that, but we're out of time for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll try and chuck everything in the um, description of the video. And don't forget, you can actually, we're going to be giving away all these tools in a contest in the not so distant future, hopefully. So check out the Patreon link in the description as well. Bye for now, guys. Thank you. Where was I?